You are now listening to the Molten Fantasy Sports Podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time you are listening to us or watching us on YouTube, you are here with us at the Molten Fantasy Sport Podcast. I am your host, Rob Kennedy, and coach of the delicious raviolis. I'm sitting here with my co-host today, Mickey Dell. How are you, my friend? Good, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I am the big horse, as you'll find me on Twitter, uh, but I am the owner, the manager of the 2023 version of Mix Pigs. How are we going, Robbie? We're good, mate. We're good, mate. We're uh, we're sort of playing through these PODs mm. or point of different players, and we're we're here now at the forwards. We've done our backs, we've done our mids. We're sitting with the forwards now, and it's we've we've done well to keep them to sort of twenty minute episodes. Yeah. We've tried to make them a little bit shorter, but I have a feeling today's might go a little bit longer because for everyone listening or coming in for the first time, welcome, welcome. But what we define as a POD or a point of difference player is someone who's owned by under 8% of teams. Mm -hmm. Now, in this forward line, there are four clear players that are getting owned or picked by everybody. So you've got Josh Dunkley, Stephen Canelio, Connor Rosie, and Tim Taranto, who are sitting at 22%, 36%, 49%, and 63%. Those are outrageously high numbers. Now, for anyone who is listening to our must-have episode, we understand why because there are a couple of must-haves out of that list. But we are now going to fill in the gaps of those points of different players for you and who you should be picking in those spots. And no better man to give us his insights. I don't know the list. I'm intrigued. You're going to get my natural reaction to what gets thrown out here. Then my man, Mickey Dell, where would you like to start, Yeah, it's, as you've said, there is quite a few pods for the forward line because there's, there's just – so much noise around the top four, isn't there? But 100%. there is one player at the top or near the top of the list that I will bring to your attention, Isaac Heaney. He averaged 101 last year, which is his best average to his or in his career to date. Um, he is one of the three Fords, registered Fords this year in Supercoach and averaged over 100 last year. He's versatile. He goes into the midfield. He goes into the forward line. I can see why he's at 5% average because you're probably going to trust a decent curry going through your guts better than this bloke scoring 100 each week. But, you know, he has the potential to really take a step forward this year. He had 13 games that he was in the 100 mark. 13 games that he's in the 100 mark. I've done a quick mm. count. 13 games that he was in the 100 mark and then even another – Three, I'll do some quick math. Three in the 90s. The only concern I have is he kicked a ton of goals. Yeah. And, and he, will he do that again? Like We're talking about a guy that's very fight-like. Um, I don't think he's going to win the Brownlow. I think he's a, he's a better forward than he's yeah. the mid, where Fife's a better mid to the forward. But that's sort of like great overhead mark for someone of his size and, and, and stature. But at that point, Price, I just can't see him doing it. But look, this is what this episode's about for PODs, and he's certainly right up there. Yeah, he is. He's, he's got that real X factor about him, doesn't he? Like he he's a good footballer. I know, and Sydney's on the rise. I, yeah. I mean, that sounds weird because I know they made the grand final, but they probably just slightly overachieved to make that grand I final. So. I love their I love their yeah. list. I got a mate here in the West who supports the Swans, and I'm more than happy to sit down and watch that team play. They are great to watch. I really, really love their list. Absolutely. Uh, the, the next one we'll get into, only at 3%, but Jeremy Cameron from Geelong. So he's, uh, he's priced, sorry, at 501K for an average of 91. For his career, he's consistently averaged over 80. So not your big, you know, 100 average, but you're always going to get your 80s, 90s, 100s out of him. Now, without Hawkins, does this now make him the number one forward? Like, does this push, like, a Stanley Ford or are they going to try Radigalia Ford, Blissabs Ford, just Dangerfield permanently Ford? Um, they are, if you remember in our first podcast, we detailed how we, we number crunch and we give you the best possible analysis of stats that we can. Geelong are the highest scoring super coach team in the competition. So there are points there. They're also the highest scoring team in regards to goals kicked in the competition. Without Hawkins, does this mean that his average jumps by 15-20 to start with? What are your thoughts? 
it won't. It 100% makes him the number one forward, without a doubt. And I actually think, strangely, they need him to be their number one forward if they're going to go back to back. I think it's it's kind of a little bit of a change in the guard. They play very different roles. But what I get concerned about is if it makes him the number one forward, does he stay home a little bit more? Because where he actually gets his points, dare I say, buddy S, mm-hmm. that he moves up the ground, gets the ball up the ground, turns onto that left foot, does a similar style to what Buddy used to do. And Buddy used to be picked in some people's super coach yeah. games because he could get those marks, get those yep. kicks, and still average you know, two and a half goals a game, which anyone who's listening along, two and a half goals doesn't sound much, but that wins you the Coleman most years, I think, now in today's day and age. But, yeah, it's it's a risk, but that's what this episode, as I said, this is what it's about. But um, if he plays up the ground and plays his usual role, he's not a bad pick with um, 3% at his price. We will bring up, if they do play Dangerfield deep forward and then he does play high, it's a good shout. It's still a tricky one, though, when you look at someone like Tim Taranta at 503. Mm that I can see why people would go to solidify someone who's going into the midfield yep. more than someone who's probably going to be a bit more of a stay-at-home forward. But, again, if you're trying to win the big cash, Jeremy Cameron could put up some good numbers this year. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a, no for, it's a no for me, but it's it's not a bad shout. The next one I'll bring up, one of your boys, Robbie, Dylan Moore. 521K for an average of 94 for the year. His average per game rised or rose by 18 points per game believe it or not. He played every game. He averaged 20 touches a game, 11 kicks, nine handballs, and probably a lot of them in the first quarter. If people can remember, he was just on fire in first quarters last year. Um, I will bring up a stat, though. He had 85 inside 50s for the year. So he's, a- he's averaging three to four inside 50s, which are big point scorers, especially if those get converted to goals. And he also kicked 26 goals himself. So... Is Dylan Moore going to play more mid or is he going to be still that roving forward with occasional stints in the midfield? I think he's got to be the high half forward, doesn't he? I think the way that he plays, um, yes, Luke Bruce is still there. Jack Gunson's gone. I'm not trying to say they're the same type of player, but Dylan Moore, what a season that he had last mm. year. Um, absolutely went missing in second half sometimes, though, as you, as you can tell in your stats, but great numbers. Can he do it again? Yes, he's got the potential. He knows how to find the footy. Like I was just saying about Jerry Cameron, he gets up the ground, gets his own footy, knows how to kick a couple of goals. He's quite efficient with the ball as well. I'd love to see. Um, I don't know if you have it. I tend to think he's definitely a kick-to-handball ratio is well ahead when it comes to kicking. Nearly um, running at 50%. 50%. Yeah. So either way, but the guy gets the footy, and it's not a it's not a bad shout at all. I get concerned, and I can see where the concern would be. Is is he actually going to put those kind of numbers up again? But I mean, for Zach Butters to be at ten percent, I would prefer Dylan Moore. I like Dylan Moore over Zach mm-hmm. Butters, if I was being honest. Especially with Zach Butters being injury prone, and he's like he just throws his body in positions that you should you just shouldn't go in. So. In the super coach world, for people that watch games, you'll know consistency is key. And yeah, you might get 10 points average more out of butters, but are you going to get cons- consistency in games out of more over butters? If you're coaching against Hawthorne, though, are you putting more time into Dylan Moore or are you putting more time into Luke Bruce? That's a tough one, isn't it? Like, I know Luke Bruce is getting on, but he's just so damaging when he gets the ball. Mm. Next one. And I, I quite like this pick, and I wouldn't be surprised if this guy goes like mid 550s to 600s this year. Jade Gresham, St Kilda. So 481k for an average of 87.5. He's averaged in the mid 80s the last three years. 2021, only three games because of injury, though. He has some real X factor about him. Um, what's Lyon going to do with him? Like, is Lyon going to play him predominantly forward or is he going to be that outside mid? You know, like, and there's a, there's another bloke on here that we'll bring up later in this podcast, but if, if he does play predominantly midfield and racks up the numbers as he has in the past, like that could jump 100K. It's really interesting that he's sitting at 481, 800, and the bloke I'm about to refer him to is sitting just below him at 480, 800. He's St Kilda's Shy Bolton. Yeah, he is. The guy that you know can be the forward, kicks some miraculous goals, has a bit of a strut, has a bit of an ego, 
But when they actually go into the midfield as well, they just give you that burst. Yeah, they do. And I think there was, I think there started to be a bit of a stat last year that um, Gresham started having more centre bounces than he's ever had last mm-hmm. season. So I wouldn't shy away from the fact that that could happen again. I still think it's you're sort of comparing him to that shy Bolton type. Um, again, really, really good, mate. I love when you bring out these players, and I love that you kind of. I don't even know if Shy's on your list. Maybe he is, and I'm sorry if I've just ruined no. the list. But I love that you kind of gone Jade over Shy because it's a really good shout. He's a very good player um, and could do anything this year. He's got so much potential. He's got more. Mate, he's got more talent in his pinky than I have in my mm-hmm. body. Absolutely. Likewise. Yeah. Um, and for those of you at home, I don't have Shy Bolton in my list. Um, okay. Just purely because he's just so hot and cold as well. Um, I see more value out of Jade Gresham, so we'll have this one. Am I am I am, am I nuts by saying it still mind boggles me that Dusty Martin's at eleven percent ownership? Oh, for me that's ridiculous. We, I don't I, I like. Let's not take anything away from who he is. Let, like absolute goat when it comes to grand finals and yep. finals. Shout out to Luke Hodge. I think he's a goat when it comes to finals as well. Mm-hmm. But um. Absolute goat when it comes to that. I'm not saying he's the greatest of all time when it comes to seasonal play. Yeah. But he's he's on the decline. People have to look at players' stats over the years and where they're sort of trending. And he's not on an upward trend. He's not on a neutral trend. He's on a downward trend. Now, call me out mid-year, and he might still come out round one and score 130, but he's done that round one many yeah, times, yeah. and people jump on him straight away, and he drops straight off. Don't waste your trades if that happens. That is a precursor for what's happened in the past. He does score well early, but then drops it right off. I'd be surprised if he if he spends any less than 65% forward this year, if not more. That's that's your that's yours and my generation that are just going, oh, Dusty, at that price, it's too good. No, no. At a certain point, you've got to go, let's switch down to the next generation that are coming through yeah. now, and we've got, to, we've got to make sure we jump on them. It's no different to like a Jake Lloyd in the back yep. line. You've just got to make a point where you jump to that next generation. And, and that's my big shout-out to anyone listening along. Yeah. And uh, it's been a little bit since we, we uh, did our uh, backline pods. But word today is that Nick Blakey is out until the start of the season. I believe he's got glandular fever or something along those lines. So oh. Jake Lloyd, I believe, is at 1% at the moment. He may come into calculations. You heard it here yeah. first from me. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, wait, hold on. Hold on one second. That, that's hot. That's so that's hot. hot. That was an absolute hot take. Thank you. No worries. Good. So the next one, or the next two I want to bring up, have 0% ownership, which like, if they're played in positions that I believe they're going to be played in, they're going to score really well. So the first one, Jack Darling, 376K from West Coast. He's priced at an average of 68 this year. You've got to remember there's no Kennedy this year. West Coast are going to have a full side to choose from, given their injury and health concerns from last year. I still believe they're going to finish in the eight. He's been a top 10 forward three times in the past five years as well. So when you're looking at those numbers, he's been a pillar of consistency with scoring with forward line players. Um, You may have more of a word on him, Robbie, being from Perth, but... Geez, at 376k and finishing in the top three, top ten, sorry, three times in five years, that is consistency right there. There is so much to unfold from what you've just said. I, I'm I'm working heavily, at, I'm working very heavily on communication, and I've learnt that communication goes both ways. It's not just communicating verbally, but also listening. So I wanted to cut you off three times, and I'm probably going to forget some of it, but. You think West Coast is going to finish in the top eight? I think there's a big chance, yeah. Yep, their they're domain over there, they are so hard to beat at home. And with a full list, if they can stay healthy, they're, they're hard to beat. And they're, they're, um, their form at the MCG has gotten a lot better in the, in the previous couple of years. Um, yeah, I reckon we'll look back at this. What is it, February, whatever it is today. Um, I just think I think you're falling into the I think you're falling into the trap of the 2018 Premiership team and those names are still sitting there on the sheet. Yep, that was five seasons ago. Yeah, I. You know what? I'm I'm going to 
tell me, tell, tell me who's added to that team. Tell me who's added to that team that makes no, it better. I, I just think when Nick Nat knew he's up and about, he's one of the best ruckmen in the competition. Tell me when Nick Nat knew he's been up and about. Hopefully this year, so I can prove people right. Wow. Yeah. I, okay. No, yeah. Cool. cool. I love this. This is good. Sorry, we divulged from forward pods, but yeah. cool. Good chat. Yeah. We'll, we'll touch base with this in however many episodes time and. No, really good. No, so Jack Darling, sorry. I, I do divulge. I'm sorry. We do want to try and keep this short yeah. chat. Jack Darling, mate, if he again plays up the ground and Oscar Allen takes a sort of forward role or they sort of do a little bit of an interchangeable yeah. kind of thing that's going on, when he's up and about, he's taking marks up yep. the ground, he's getting on the boot, he's kicking goals, he's underrated. Everybody gives him a bit of a bit of house for, you know, he drops marks and things like that at certain points. But the guy can play. The guy yeah. can play. Um uh, big risk, watch this space, mm-hmm. those type of things. And I, I dare be cliche and ring the bell on every cliche. But at 0%, I'm surprised he's not in some people's yeah. sides. Um, but, um, yeah, good shout. It's always good when you find those 0%. Are you – um? or have you heard any intel about their practice match? Like, I, Oh, yeah, good I did, shout. I did um, hear that no. Oscar Allen kicked four goals and a half, which to me would believe um, they'll play Oscar Allen deep forward rotating into the ruck to give Nick Nat a bit of a chop out. Does that mean Darling pushes up the ground a little bit now? Yeah, sorry, mate. You threw me off at the top eight. I could talk about the Eagles so much, obviously living here in the West. But um, I heard Elliot Yo was by far best on ground. I heard Oscar Allen kick some goals early on. I did hear that Jack Darling pulled up with a bit of a niggle and went off the ground at certain points. He has had niggles in the past. I think we hear this a lot when it comes to the Eagles players that we've heard about the niggles. So watch this space. Um, but, uh, yeah, Jack Darling did go off the ground. I don't think it's anything major, but dare I say, excuse me, he, he did go off with a little bit of a niggle. Okay. Yep. But Elliot Yo, he's a lock. He's a lock for me in the back line now after what I heard he what he did in the preseason game. Yeah, he blitzed it from all accounts over here. Uh, another one. Rotating rota- and genuinely rotated between in the midfield to the half. Oh, Ripper. Yeah. So for those of you listening at home, on your way to work, on your way home from work, you heard it here first, he's up and about. Mm. Yeah, he started. And and what I like to hear about as well, he started in the midfield. So you'd like to think that maybe where they started is where they're going to majority be. Uh, So two more. Um, I want to bring up Jason Johannesson with you. So he's at 298K for an average of 60. So the last few – like he played seven games in 2022 – the last few years, Luke Beveridge has trolled him forward. In Supercoach World, we know what he was like in the late 2018, 2019, 2017, uh, their premiership year, 2016. Did he win the Norm Smith medal or was close to winning the Norm Smith medal? No, he yeah. won it. He won it against Sydney. I mean, it was interesting because he butchered the ball. but He, he got, got a lot, lot of it. it. Yeah. Um, word is he's back to the back line. He's playing back now as that running defender. Uh, back then, he was... He was in the 500,000s for price. So if he gets back to what he was like three or four years ago, um, watch this space. He could average, easily average in mid-80s, early 90s if he gets back to that kind of form. If he's in the back line... She's a maniac, maniac on the floor. If he's in the back line, he's an absolute mid-price maniac yeah. because we know what he can do back there. So I don't need to add anything to what you've said. If he is in the back line at that price, he will jump in. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And the last one, this guy's at 6%, which it surprises me a little bit, but Marcus Windhager from St. Kilda. I don't know whether the Perth lads would have heard much about right, So one more time, were you speaking German just now? Marcus or, sorry, Windhager <laughs> from St. Kilda. So this bloke is priced at an average of 45, right? Absolutely. Good play there, mate. So his average for the year, 11.8 disposals, which, you know, 266K, that's like your pretty, you know, 18 to 22 best player in the team, in and out of the team. He was sub a lot. In the last, oh, sorry, three of the last four games that he played in, I'm just going to throw you some numbers. 23 touches, five tackles. 17 touches, 6 tackles. 21 touches, 7 tackles. 
And that was all, like he scored over 80 each of those games. He's priced at an average of 45 at the moment. So for me, that's, that's dollar signs everywhere. And I will add to that, he's won both their time trials. They won 2K time trials this year. He is playing. He played in a practice match starting midfield. Uh, he's a mid forward. You've got that rotation there. Uh, I didn't have him, but after reading the stats here and doing the research in the last couple of days, he may well make himself into my side. I think he's, mate, it's a great pickup. I think if you're getting some intel there, it's something that people need to look at. And this is what this podcast is all about. So we've talked about it before, understanding that the scoring system, if you haven't played Supercoach before, understanding that the scoring system and when they increase in value is very different to AFL Fantasy or mm. Dream Team that you've got time to take a little bit of a look at some of these players. So at a 266, would I put him in straight away? Probably not, just looking at his numbers. But I tell you what, I'm watching the first two rounds very closely uh-huh. as uh, as what his price increase might be. If he goes into that midfield, we know Ross Lyon. Ross Lyon loves just a 25-man roster. Once he picks his team, he loves his team. So once you see what sort of St Kilda are pumping out, he very rarely does these massive rotations and, and bring in others. But, uh, mate, that's a good pickup. Is he, what's he at? 3% at the moment? Did we say 6%? Six. So somebody, that, mate, and we've talked about this, anyone who's listened along as well, 6% is actually a reasonable number that people are, are hearing a bit of intel similar to maybe what Mickey Dell is putting out. So put him on your watch list. Make sure you're watching along and um, – you know, St Kilda might not be the first team that you're picking to watch every weekend, but uh, for someone like that, I'm uh, I'm checking them out. I'm closely. going to give you a shout out here, and we can check back at a later date. Marcus Winhager will average more than Dusty Martin by the end of the year. That's hot. You've heard it. You've heard That's it here huge. first. That that is a huge call. Okay, I'm I'm right now putting yep. a little mark there for our producer and, Nathan and Brown. for the viewers at home. If you disagree with us, if you'd like to ask us questions, write in, send us a message, hit us up on Twitter, uh, YouTube, wherever else. Um, I genuinely believe that this guy will rise at least 200K this year. Is he in your team? He's about to be. (laughs) I love Mm. that. I love that. Mate, that is a huge call. I love it. We got a lot of backlash from when I talked about Nick Dacos. I will say that Nick Dacos is currently in my D3 slot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's currently sitting in my D3 slot, but that is a huge statement. Watch this space for Richmond supporters to come and hit us up. That is to not take anything away from Dustin Martin and the kind of football that he's been. That is just about finding somebody, a diamond in the rough, dare we mm-hmm. say, uh, for as we go forward. Mate, fantastic. I love your insights. Again, there are so many forward PODs yeah, that we could talk about here. And I'd love for everybody to give us a shout out on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube. We love the comments that come through. This is probably that little bit of a moment for us to say thank you. Uh, what started out as a couple of boys having a bit of chat and going, why not let's have a crack and then a bit of a laugh and a way to catch up. We have been inundated with yeah. support and we can't thank you enough. Yeah, it's, it's been awesome. Like... Uh, to start from just a, a group of lads chewing the fat together, so to speak, talking footy, um, to bringing our talents live on a uh, social media platform and for people to be um, taking our advice, listening to our podcast seriously, writing in, asking us questions, sending love on on the uh, social media outlets. It is appreciated. Um, you know, we don't get paid for this. We're doing this because we enjoy what we do. We love it. Uh, we want to see people do well. And, um, yeah, hopefully one of our listeners or subscribers, please subscribe when you listen in, um, wins the big one at the end of the year. We would love that. I was nearly going to say you don't get paid, but I'll get paid when I win the super coach competition yeah. this year. But uh, as you said, I love that. If somebody happened to make one decision based off what we said, that that's mm-hmm. awesome. I dig it and I love it a lot. So, Mickey Dell, it's been an absolute pleasure. We've got one more line to do on the next episode, which will be our ruck point Mm -hmm. of differences. Um, To everybody listening along at home, thank you so much. This has been the Molten Fantasy Sport Podcast. We are signing out. Catch you next time. See ya.